Hey, welcome back to Blanchy Talks Watches. Today we've got a very special Vostok build. This is the Vostok Luna Dude, which was designed by Ole Ducca of Rocket Grace in Norway. Um, the parts are from Merinon. Um, I can do a full video on the whole saga of the Luna Dude Cosmo Diver, which is now not being produced by Marinon, but is being produced by Micro Milspec, a Norwegian micro brand. And the price has gone from a projected $200 up to, I think it's $1,000 now. So massive jump in price and quality, but it's a very different watch from what it set out to be back in the summer of 2020. So to cut the story short, basically, the factory couldn't produce the watch. The parts had already been bought and paid for by Marinum. So Marinum decided to sell the parts. And myself and many others jumped on it, bought all the parts and decided to do the DIY version. So the build I'm doing here will be correct to the original design specs of the Vostok Cosmo Diver Luna Dude. It'll use the Vostok 2426.02 movement, which will be coming from a donor Neptune GMT. This in itself is a pretty rare watch, so it is a shame to strip it, but I can't not build a Luna Dude, so that's what we're going to do. The way I'm approaching this, I think, is what a lot of people will have to do, so I'm going to do it every step of the way. I was thinking I'd cut it down and do a nice clean build, but this is what most people are going to face. So what I'm working with here is the strap, which is the engraved buckle, Cosmo Diver strap. As I said, I have a Vostok Neptune GMT. I have a donor watch here, and this is going to provide me with the 710 case. Of course, the case is supposed to be brushed, so I'll be addressing that in this video as well. We've got the Vostok Luna Dude Cosmo Diver bezel. This is kind of what kicked off the whole sell off of parts as it is very slightly misaligned you can see the the inner numbers don't match up with the outer numbers if you look at the 6 and the 45 it's quite clear that it is not lined up correctly and um, i will also be using a replacement bezel wire because the bezel wire on the bezel is not good enough in my opinion and i'll show you why when i make the swap and of course we have the absolutely stunning Fostock Luna Dude dial with the concentric circles. Now whatever your thoughts or opinions on the project and how it ended up going, I think we can all agree this is an absolutely beautifully designed dial and Ole Duggett did an absolutely fantastic job designing this and it's truly unique and it, it I mean it deserves to be in a watch that's valued a lot more than two hundred dollars but I feel very thankful to be able to get it for the price that I did. And last but not least we have the replacement date wheel to put the black date instead of the white one that is in the Neptune that I got. This Neptune actually came from Vostok Inc which is the Vostok factory shop rather than Marinon, but all the other parts are from Marinon. So, first things first, I'm going to disassemble the Neptune. So I'm going to try and do this carefully so I don't get the movement running, because I'm going to strip the hands pretty quickly off it. It'll probably run a little bit, but there's not much I can do about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop off the bracelet just to make it a bit easier. And I will link any tools used in the description and I'll provide links to parts and tools and everything I use. Um, just to make it easier, I'm not going to run through the tools in one go as I do with the parts, but I'll, I'll name them as I use them. So I'm just using a little bracelet sizing tool here. Um, not sure where I got it. It's from China anyway, probably AliExpress, like most of my cheap tools all it does is you screw it through you can see the pin just popping out here screw it through pushes the pin out 
unscrew it and then you just have to pull the pin that separates the braces. Next up we will need a case back opening tool, a three pronged one like this. This one did definitely come from AliExpress, not expensive at all but a must have if you're going to be working on your Vostoks. Quick turn and there it is unlocked. Then I like to use my spring brush tool just to open up the rest of the way. Actually funnily enough as I'm recording this right now I see a notification from Ole posted in the official Cosmo Diver group page on Facebook so that's uh, kind of ironic. So we'll pop the back off. There we go, that's the lovely Neptune case back. What I like to do in this situation then is pop off the rotor because if that's turning, it's going to charge the watch, which we don't want. So while I'm getting into the movement now, I'm actually going to put on a pair of gloves. I don't have finger cuts. They work just fine, so I'm going to throw these on just to make sure I don't get any grease or oil from my hands on either of the movements or inside either of the washes that I'm going to be working on tonight. So, very simple. To remove the rotor, it's just the one screw in the middle here. You want to get yourself a decent set of screwdrivers for this. These are quite cheap, but they do the job well. Tweezers, of course, very important when you're doing anything on a watch. There you have the screw. Now you want to put them somewhere safe because they are, I can't even focus on there, extremely small. Don't want to lose that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a little plastic tray to keep the small parts in and I'll keep that just off screen there. Okay, so with that screw removed, I'm going to remove the rotor gently. I say gently as I drop it. But there you have the rotor. As you can see, it is moving slightly there which was to be expected but I hope it settles down before we remove it so then you want to pull the crown to the time setting position before you take it out so it's in the time setting position now and you just want to push on this little button here to press that it pops straight out and we're going to gently remove the gasket, doing our best not to damage it and just remembering which side was up. So then this is ready to be removed so we will gently turn it over and it falls straight out like that. So the movement holder is still in place there. So the way you remove that is you take out that screw there and this screw down here. This movement is not an easy movement to get and if I damage this there will be no Luna dude for me because I'm not going to find another one. I'm pretty sure I got the last of these Neptunes available anywhere as well because as I mentioned in the, the unboxing video it will probably actually come out after the Luna dude is up but I actually ordered the wrong one, the non-GMT version, and Vostok Inc. were kind enough to send me the correct one. I can actually get it out there now. There we go. It's just a metal movement space here. Okay, so there we have it. We've got our 2426 movement out of the case. So to take the hands off then you need a hand remover tool which I have right here. This is another one from AliExpress. I like this one because it's got the nylon blocks on it. So the nylon blocks on it so as it pull it doesn't do any damage to the dial. 
I do have some Virgin dial protectors ordered. They didn't unfortunately arrive in time for this, so I'm just going to make do with a bit of plastic just to slip in front of the dial so I don't damage it. You just put it over the hands and then squeeze it, it pulls them off. Small seconds on. There we go. Usually, when you're removing hands, especially on a Vostok, you want to make sure that it is at the 12 o'clock position so the date change happens at the right time. With this watch, I am actually going to be changing the date wheel so it doesn't matter as much. So, I'm going to remove the dial on this one, which is just held in by a couple of screws again. There we have it. Okay, so the next step is a bit of a tricky one. Um, I'm hoping I can get it without causing any harm, but I have never attempted this before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be changing the date wheel from the white to the black one I have. It's basically the way the date wheel works is there's a little spring just inside here and then it clicks in these little bits on the watch here. So I'm gonna remove three screws to take the front plate off. It's this screw here, followed by this screw, and then lastly, this screw down here. Okay, that one appears to be out now. Very carefully put these screws away after you take them out. As we get deeper into this project, everything is getting smaller and smaller. Making me more and more nervous, <laughs> to be honest. There we go. You'll hear the little click as it unseats. Tip as well when you're using these tweezers try not to hold it tight because if you hold it tight and it slips off it shoots away whereas if you're holding it just with enough force to hold it if it does drop it drops straight down in your workspace instead of shooting across the room and last but not least we have the third screw here Now, I'm going to be super careful taking this off because the last thing I'm going to happen is lose that spring because I will never get another one unless I harvest from another movement, which I'd really rather not do if at all possible. Okay, oh, it's all loose now, as you can see. So, the top plate off, we can take off the white date wheel, put that off the side, we don't need that. And there is the spring I was telling you about, that's the one you don't want to lose. One side is longer than the other, the long side goes to the bottom. This is the date jumper here. This is what the spring sits against and catches into the ridges on the date wheel. So you just want to sit the new date wheel on top. 
get it lined up so it's flush all the way around. Move the arm up slightly out of the way. Flush all the way around. And now we put this plate back on. Now the sequence of the screws doesn't matter while refitting it. Personally, I prefer to start with the middle one, just I find it a bit easier. I get them all in a bit loose and then tighten it up after. Just need to make sure that the date wheel stays in the center and able to move as you're doing this. It's extremely difficult to do this on camera. I would normally have my head buried in it using the loop. But I can't get my head that close and record. And it doesn't help that it's almost half ten at night while I'm building this. So apologies, you're just gonna have to bear with me here. There's another point as well. You need to make sure you have very good lighting when doing any work on watches. I have a couple of different ring lights on as well as the spotlights in the room so the room is quite bright. Still able to move the wheel, perfect. And last screw now. It's certainly the most stressful thing I've done to a watch. absolutely be worth it in the long run because having this black date wheel one it looks far better and two from what I've seen from the guys doing the DIYs very few of them have the correct black date wheel so this will be one of the very small number in the world that has the black date wheel on the limited personally I'm not a fan of the date wheel and I think it was a poor choice go with it especially when the community was asked and the vast majority of people said no date but ultimately the decision was up to Ole the designer he wanted the date so we have to respect his decision okay there we go all three screws tightened down and the date wheel still moves so the next step now is another tricky one what we need to do is take this tiny spring here and fit it into this space here. Go in this way. Put it in like that. And then from here you have to put your finger over to block it. Okay, so I'm blocking. I'm blocking this side here and then bringing it down and in. I'll try zoom in and edit again, but I'm more concerned with getting this right than how visible it is. So bear with me, please. that actually clicked in touch wood surprisingly easy and then it yeah you can see it's not moving anymore perfect so that I think is it done so now I'm just going to put the crown back in and see does it work ok so we're in time setting mode now change the time so it's not about the hands if anything's actually happening or not there you go see that that clicked over there 
So I did in fact get it on right. Oh, that is fantastic. Brilliant, that's a huge achievement for me. That is a new black day wheel put on. So the project is starting to feel real now. <laughs> this is great. So what I'll do now, I think, is I will fit the Luna Dude dial. So this is the same, or the opposite, I should say, of the dial removal. There you have it, with the black date wheel. So I'll just tighten up the screws. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave that off to the side and get working on the rest of the watch. Next step is disassemble this watch. Similar to the Neptune. So I'm not going to remove the rotor because I'm going to throw this straight into the Neptune case. And I'll probably change that build up. No, I definitely will change that build up a bit, but it's not a problem for today. So you now gently pull out the casket. So the same as before, you want to pull out the crown to the time setting position. Push down the lever. Pop the crown out. There we go. So now I'm going to get the... Uh, Neptune case. I'm just going to pop this straight out of the case and then pop this straight in. No messing around. Straighten the movement. Put the crown in. Press the lever. Get it in. And then I, what I normally do is I Usually screw it down first, then screw it back out, and then try pull it, and hopefully it will have no. See, it didn't see it there. So, let's press the lever, and then what I do if it doesn't see it? There I go. While I'm depressing the lever, get tweezers. You grab onto the stem, and you give it a give it a bit of a nudge in. Even screw it in first. Get as tight in as you can, and then try. Give it just a bit more because they can drive you mad trying to get it to seat in properly. Now, hopefully, that's seated. If not, I'll use a wider tweezers to get a better grip on it. No, that's seated perfectly. So, that's that one done. And then we will put the Neptune gasket back on this one. Gently fitting it in to make sure it sits correctly in the whole way around, and then we will put the standard amphibia back on this, I think, and we we'll keep the Neptune one for for the Luna dude for the time being, just as a nod to the movement that is being sacrificed for the Luna dude. I know this isn't necessarily in the the Luna Dude build, but this is the full process, and I know if I threw the parts in the bits box, it would sit for far too long before I actually build a watch out of it. So, at least if I throw it in straight in the case, tighten it up. There you go, there's another Vostok made. Obviously, the bezel doesn't sit the watch, but I will change that probably tomorrow, I'd say. Okay, so back on to the Luna Dude. So, first steps first is 
take off this bezel. I use an automotive trim remover tool for this and it is the best way to get off a Vostok bezel. Simple as that. Absolutely no risk to scratching the case because it's plastic. Brilliant. It's got narrower ends on this side, thicker end here on a bezel like that with a good side profile. Thicker end goes straight in, pop, done. And that was on quite tight as well. So again, I'll link these tools in the description, but uh, there's different ones with thinner ends and stuff to get under the, the harder bezel, but absolutely fantastic piece of kit. And anyone who's modified Vosox definitely needs to get one. Okay, so with that done, we're gonna move on to the brushed finish. That's something that was a key design element, I feel. And of course I have a polished case, so I'm gonna rectify that. I have done a full video on this before, but it takes a minute. Super easy, and it changes the look of the watch completely. So step one is just protect your crystal. Just a bit of masking tape, but there we have it, fully protected. So all you need is a bit of scotch pad. Yeah, you just want to make sure you're doing it in the same direction the whole time. So I'll kind of break it down into quadrants. One, two, three, and four. And just do the same number in the same direction each time. I think I'll go for about 30 scratches on the first one and see how it looks. To look at the difference in that straight away. High gloss, you can see my reflection there. To a lovely satin finish. And all the lines are going the same direction. Beautiful. Beautiful, as there wasn't a crown on this side, I could do the whole way, but again, just in the corners, I need to brush a bit more. I'll just finish them all and then I'll come back. Just give it a quick wipe down to see how it looks. That looks pretty damn good to me. I'll just do the sides then. Okay, that is a fully brushed case. It's important to make sure your workspace is kept clean between all these processes, so every stage is just blowing off any potential dust. Beauty this finish as well as you can touch it up yourself at home as needed. So next step we're going to inspect the crystal and see is there any scratches. Being a second hand Vostok, chances are there is. It's not too bad, there's some very light hazing on it, so I'm going to give it a, a bit of a, a poly watch. Again now I have a video on this. If you want to go back and have a look, see how to do it, but it is super easy again. This is an acrylic crystal, so that's why it's so easy to polish out. Any light scratches. That is perfect. The next step is fitting the hands. I actually forgot to show them at the start of the video, but I have a couple of sets of these. I got extras just in case. They come in like a little pill capsule, which is uh, quite unusual. These hands should be a direct fit. I know there was some issues fitting the hands on some of the other movements. But it should be fine in this because this is the fully correct movement for this watch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this until it hits 12 again. So I can set the hands in the correct time. Because one thing I love about Vostox is the sharp click at 12 o'clock on the dot. It moves over the date. It's something that much dearer watches can't manage. I'm looking at you Seiko and I think it's it's just it's really nice to just have that click at midnight. There we 
have a study. It's midnight. So, setting the hands. We will start with the GMT hand, then the hour hand, then the minute, then the second hand. These hands are custom to the Vostok Luna dude, and they are very nice. The lime green on the GMT hand, bit of an unusual choice. Um, it ties in with the bezel, but it just adds a bit of visual interest. GMT hands are often a different colour, like a bright red, so it is nice to have one that is a bright colour, but still different. The trick I use for setting hands is sticking on a bit of tape. <laughs> stick it on a bit better than that. But if you stick it onto a bit of tape, it gives you the control. But as you saw there, it still does pop off quite easily. Just let you line up. So the way I like to set these is. Get it as central as possible. And I usually push down with the, clock, with the tweezers. I find that gives me good results. And then for like the minute hand, probably I'll do it with my finger, but like how the tweezers lets me get both sides. I use like the heel of this tweezers. There, that's on there now. Perfect. Now we'll do the hour hand. Tape again. Straight up at 12. hand now this might look like they're going on quite easily but until they're all on and we rotate the time there's no guarantee that they're on correctly and it happens quite often that you'll have the hands on and off a few times before you get them perfect so can be frustrating but don't let it get you disheartened and just take your time and honestly if it's your first time getting hand set get a second set of them or a third set or a few sets <laughs> because they can be fiddly especially I find the longer second hands you can can ruin them quite easily but I bent plenty of hands back into shape as well and to be honest under a crystal you wouldn't even notice. So I felt that click on there. They seem to be sitting so what you do is then you check side profile if I can focus to see if they look like they're pushing off each other. And I'd say they are yeah this our hand hasn't gone down far enough, I think. So I'll do is I'll rotate it and see what happens. I think that might be slightly off. Uh, no, actually, that looks alright. 
trade its preference. I just don't like the way that feels there. I'd like the other hand to be slightly lower. change there. Strange. You can see the GMT is running at half the speed of the hour hand, which is perfect. Just not sure why the date changed there. I might have to pull the hands off and do it again. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pull the hands off because it's there. Okay, that is not ideal. I'm gonna have to pull them off and reseat them. See, as I said, you might think you're there, but <laughs> don't let it frustrate you. So we'll go GMT again. Back on the 12. I'm not sure why that. I mean, you saw it clicked over. Unless I twisted it by mistake. Which probably gives me an opportunity to set the other hand a bit deeper. Which is good. So, finger cuts or gloves are so important at this stage because, as you can see, I'm poking away at the hands and dial, and you really don't want to be. Getting your, the oils of your fingers all over the dial and look, I've got away with it. People gave out to me in my last build video about not wearing finger cuts. So I'm doing it right this time. I was lucky with the last one not to get any marks on it. And to be honest, I've built plenty of watches like that. But on a dial like this, that's, let's face it, there might never be another run of these dials. I'd be taking no chances with damaging it in any way. Also buying a spare dial helps. <laughs> okay, let's see what's happened there. I didn't set it with the tape properly. Tried to fudge it in and I was having none of it. So again, this is why we have the tape. Click down, I like hearing that. Now we will go for the minute hand. So I'll rotate the hands and see what happens. Okay, first impressions are good, I don't see. Any catching there? Pretty happy with the alignment there. Just keep going until. Yeah, it looks great at the six. Perfect, even. Keep going and hope it'll take over at exactly 12. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Any time around now, I'd be happy. Oh, did you see that? That clicked at exactly, well, what was it, four minutes to 12? Which is more than good enough for me. I am thrilled with that. Now it's just to set the second hand. And then we can look at putting it into the case. This one is tiny, and again, I would absolutely recommend fitting this with a loop, but I just can't get my head in with the camera rig that I have set up. Okay, so new tactic. Using the phone here, zoomed in. Terrible angle, but I can see the little 
and I'm trying to get the second one to sit on so I'm going to see can I get it on like this So you'd say this has given me quite a headache <laughs> trying to get this on. I got it on. There you go. I'll gently try to push it on. <laughs> it's really easy to get it to see right. And see, does it clear it? I believe there can be clearance issues with this one. Jimmy Jan's gonna hold up there. Did that stop it as well? I might try slightly bend the Jim Tian loop. Okay, so I think that's it fixed there now. We'll just go around again and see how it gets passed and that everything lines up with the 12 and then we'll throw it into the case. Yeah, just about gets over it there. So we line up with 12 and click. Perfect. Six months, 12, it's clicking over. Good enough for me. Okay, now into the 710 case we prepared earlier. So again, it's in time setting mode. So we will depress the lever, or the button even, and pull out the crown. There we go. Okay, so put the moving holder back on. Just line it up. If you want the screws in, drop it into the case. That makes it a lot easier to get the second screw in on the moving holder. Don't tighten these fully until you slot the crown in, because you can see it's turned there. Get the crown in. And tighten down fully. Make sure they're nice and tight so they don't fall out while you're using the watch, which can happen and they can cause all sorts of havoc. Okay, that's nice and tight. So then, as before, you depress the button, push it in, and screw it tight. While it's still depressed, once it's in there, go tighten, loosen it up. And voila. your rotor on. Unscrew. That's that done and then we put the Neptune case back on this one. Case back tool, nice and tight. Then the bezel. As I mentioned, I'm going to swap out the bezel wire. It is super cheap and flimsy. 
let's see, the comparison to a copper one I got from, I think it was commanderski.com, but you can get them from Marinom and other places too. This one I had pre-bent because I used it on a bezel before. Line the bezel up. Let's see how quick and easy that went on. And all that's left is the strap. Which again, is the official strap for this watch. There's going to be a lot of arguments over what's official and what's not, but this is as it was designed and produced by the producer who was supposed to produce it. So, DIY or not, I'm calling this the official Luna Dude. Official parts from the official supplier, just assembled by myself. To me, it'll always be the official and original Aluna Dude. There we have it, the official Aluna Dude. Just a few days after I built the watch and I uh, just gave it a clean up and I said I'd film the outro now. So we've been wearing this the last couple of days and it is absolutely stunning. Uh, your standard Vostok feel for the case obviously but the strap and dial and everything else are so much more premium than your standard Vostok. Um, I did unfortunately, you can see it there, get a tiny nick in the dial. Um, it shows up a lot more on this with the very bright ring light you can see but it's hardly noticeable with natural daylight and uh, to be honest I don't care. Look, I was annoyed when I did it, but it just kind of adds to it. And uh, I also have another full set that I'm hoping to build up probably at some point in the future. If I could get a movement, I'd nearly just lock it all away for who knows how many years and build a fresh one when there's uh, no more parts around. Speaking of no more parts around, since I filmed this, they're all gone. Um, there was a few parts left well, sorry there was no parts left anyway but they were still on the Marinom website as sold out now they're not even searchable on Marinom so I can't even include links for you to see but if that changes I'll go back and update the description but for now it looks like they're all gone unfortunately and with that the prices on the second hand market have gone absolutely crazy these are selling currently for $450 US dollars um, pretty regularly from one supplier I can think of um, out of Russia and then I think I saw one for like $600 sold on eBay which is absolutely insane but look I won't ramble on anymore this is an extremely long video at this point I think I finished the edit up and it's over 45 minutes up to this point so thank you so much for watching it was an absolute journey and um, be thankful that I edited out a lot of the footage because it took me significantly longer than that to build this watch uh, but that's what happens when you start building a watch at 10 o'clock at night. Not exactly the freshest. Look, I'll do a full review of this watch because it absolutely deserves it. It is a stunning piece. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Please do like, share with your friends and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.